so friends now we will be studying the superposition phenomena and the composition of simple harmonic motions through superposition here we will be focusing on two cases number one is the composition of two linear or collinear simple harmonic motions or SHM of the same frequency but differing in amplitudes and phases and number two is composition of two simple harmonic motions or SHMs of the equal time period but different amplitudes and phases acting at right angles to each other so let us begin with that so first case that is case one is we'll be considering this composition of two collinear SHMs or simple harmonic motions of same frequency but differing in amplitudes and phases so consider first two collinear simple harmonic motions and that may be represented as x1 is equal to a sine omega t and another one as x2 equal to b sine omega t plus delta so here a and b are the respective amplitudes and delta as you all know is the phase difference or epoch between two simple harmonic motions so according to the principle of superposition so according to superposition x will be x1 plus x2 that will be a sine of omega t plus b sine of omega t plus delta so that will be equal to a sine omega t plus b sine omega t cos delta plus b cos omega t sine of delta that will be equal to a plus b cos delta sine of omega t plus b sine delta cos of omega t so this will be equal to if we consider this as capital a cos phi it can be written as capital a cos phi into sine omega t plus a sine phi into cos of omega t so what are the considerations here first let me write the outcome of it so this comes out as x equal to a sine omega t plus phi here we can write a cos phi is equal to a plus b cos delta and a sin phi is equal to b sin of delta so this is one equation that we are getting from here now if we square and add the these equations if we first name them as equation 2 because we are naming this as equation 1 and this as 3 so squaring and adding equations 2 and 3 we will get so what we'll be getting if we square this we know that cos square phi plus sine square phi is equal to 1 so it will be a square is equal to a plus b cos delta whole square plus b square sine square delta or you can say a is equal to root over a square plus b square plus 2ab cos delta so we are getting this equation from the derivations to evaluate phi so this equation 
the above equation can be divided by this one so this equation if we divide by this one we will be getting tan phi is equal to b sine of delta by a plus b cos of delta so this is the value of tan of phi from where we can find the value of phi so friends here in this case if delta is equal to 0 capital a equal to a plus b and similarly phi will be equal to 0 therefore x equal to we can write a plus b sine of omega t and similarly if delta is equal to pi then a will be equal to a difference of a and b and phi similar to the previous equal to 0 so x we can write as a difference b sine omega t these are the special cases of this condition now we'll be going on to case 2 so now we are coming over to the final case that is case 2 where we will be seeing composition of two simple harmonic motions of equal time period but different amplitudes and phases acting at right angle to each other this one is very important from examination point of view so if you consider two simple harmonic motions of frequency of frequency n acting at right angle to each other so we will be getting two equations one x equal to a sine omega t another one is y equal to b sine omega t plus delta so here omega is equal to 2 pi n so from these equations we have x by a equal to sine of omega t and y by b is equal to sine of omega t plus delta now we can say y by b is equal to sine of omega t cos delta plus cos of omega t sin delta we have expanded this formula it's a plain trigonometric equation you all should know this but we know that sin omega t is equal to x by a and from trigonometric relations we can find cos omega t equal to plus minus root over 1 minus x square by a square so if we put all these values in the equations we will be getting I am writing the final form of the equations here y by b equal to x by a cos of delta plus minus root over 1 minus x square by a square into sine of delta or we can write y by b minus x by a cos of delta is equal to plus minus root over 1 minus x square by a square into sine of delta or simplifying this we will be getting y by b and we can give a square over here after simplifying if we square this we will be getting this value x square by a square cos square delta minus 2xy by 
a b into cos of delta plus x square by a square into sin square delta is equal to sin square delta so we'll be getting sorry it will not be y since here is this term we will be getting after simplification x square by a square plus y square by b square minus of this term 2xy by a b into cos of delta equal to sin square delta so this is the general equation of an ellipse as you all can see so we have got this equation this is the general equation of an ellipse inclined to the axis of the two dimensional cartesian coordinate system and contained within the rectangle of sides 2a and 2b so i have drawn the diagram here previously so this is the equation of looks like so these figures i will be illustrating what these are called in the further terms so here we can also define some special cases as before as the case one so when delta is equal to zero then sine of delta will also be equal to zero but cos of delta will be equal to one so we'll be getting y equal to b by a x this term similarly when sine of delta equal to zero and cos of delta is equal to minus one what we'll be getting we'll be getting y equal to minus b by a into x this term so for this term the figure will look like a straight line from here with an inclusion of angle theta and for this condition it will look like this line a straight line with an inclusion of angle theta this side so these are the special cases of case 2 now we will be going straight away into another topic and that is the last topic that is Lissajous figure so now let us come to the Lissajous figure so what are Lissajous figure so Lissajous figures are the curves formed by the superposition of two SHMs at right angles to each other so these figures that are formed that I have previously shown you in case 1 and case 2 are known as Lissajous figure so what are the uses of Lissajous figure so for uses number one we can say we can determine the amplitude of signal waves so amplitude determination number two can be the shape of signal wave determination number three it is useful to determine the ratio of frequencies of two vibrations so ratio of frequencies of two vibration and also we can use it to determine frequency of unknown tuning fork we can determine unknown frequency so this is the uses and the definition for Lissajous figure this is only important from the examination point of view and also Lissajous figures can be produced from CRO or cathode ray oscilloscope and cathode ray oscilloscope have the Lissajous figures to measure all the quantities uh, that are being generated by the waves and shapes of the waveforms so now let us jump to the last part of this portion 1.1 of simple harmonic motion that is the examples of simple harmonic motion so it is very basic idea 
so first example we can take as the motion of a pendulum that is like this if this is the origin point this angle let it be theta a force is acting in the upward direction in this way so this is the locus and mg is acting this way so this will be mg cos of theta and here it will be mg sin of theta and let this length be l so from here we can get the equations as d square theta by dt square is equal to minus omega square theta and also we can determine the time period that is t of the pendulum as 2 pi into root over l by g with this formula also another example of simple harmonic motion is u tube manometer oscillations of fluid of u tube manometer where it looks somewhat like this this is the portion of youtube manometer with one end broader than the other one this is the midline it is the fluid and this is the amount of fluid raised x this one and this one also x here and let the distance from the datum is l so we can get the equation as d square x by dt square plus omega square x equal to 0 also we can determine the time period of the oscillation of fluid as 2 equal t equal to 2 pi into root over l by 2g similarly example number 3 for a mass attached to a spring like this we can say the mass is m then the formula of t that we know as 2 pi by omega can get modified as 2 pi into root over m by k where k is the spring constant and m is the mass of the weight so that's all for this video and we have come to the end of the first portion of module 1 that is simple harmonic motion in the next videos we will be continuing module 1 with damped vibration and forced vibration club together for a better understanding thank you